866-NJ-SMART. Cure Auto Insurance. Switch your car insurance and save. Visit cure.com. Hey everyone, really good to see you again about a half hour earlier. You can see by this graphic that uh, one story is going to dominate a lot of uh, the morning. It is the uh, confirmation hearing of Amy Coney Barrett. Yesterday were opening statements. So everyone, all the senators got a chance to speak for about 10 minutes. And you know, compared to some of the other hearings we've seen, it probably wasn't that exciting, right Vlad? Um, but what we did get is a sense of where the questioning is going to go today. The Democrats and the Republicans um, beating sort of their own, it's their own drum beat, but everyone, depending on the party, dancing to that same beat. Um, that was probably not the best metaphor, <laughs> but I know you can help me out with that, Vlad. <laughs> I, like the, uh, I like what Ilya Shapiro said yesterday. Kabuki theater, Anne-Marie. Kabuki theater. Right. A uh, performance. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so let us talk about where we begin today, which is day two of high-stakes Supreme Court confirmation hearings that will soon be underway. As you say, Anne-Marie, in about 30 minutes, the Senate Judiciary Committee will begin questioning President Trump's nominee, Judge Amy Coney Barrett. As the election and, of course, the coronavirus pandemic continues to grip the country, this comes after yesterday's opening statements where Democrats focused, for the most part, on the future of health care, while Republicans praised Barrett's conservative ideology and her resume. By replacing Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg with someone who will undo her legacy, President Trump is attempting to roll back Americans' rights for decades to come. Every American must understand that with this nomination, equal justice under law is at stake. But what your political opponents want to paint you as is a TV or cartoon version of a religious radical, a so-called handmaid that feeds into all of the ridiculous stereotypes they have set out to lambast people of faith in America. Identical twins from Cambridge, Minnesota, honor roll students, star athletes. They play in the softball team. One's a pitcher, one's a catcher. They also play basketball. One of them got severe diabetes when she was very young. Does it matter which one? The pitcher, the catcher? They both deserve good health care. They get that with one stroke of a pen, one judge can decide if millions of Americans, including their family, would lose their insurance. And the good news is, whether you think your religious beliefs might ju be judged wacky by someone else, it's none of the business of this committee to delve into any of that in this context. Because in this committee, and in this Congress, and in this constitutional structure, religious liberty is the basic truth. And whatever you or I or Judge Barrett believe about God isn't any of the government's business. Judge Barrett's confirmation would shift the court's balance even further to the right, impacting our nation's laws for potentially decades to come. In her opening statement, she tried to avoid the partisan battle unfolding across the country as the election approaches. Courts have a vital responsibility to the rule of law, which is critical to a free society. But courts are not designed to solve every problem or right every wrong in our public life. The policy decisions and value judgments of government must be made by the political branches, elected by and accountable to the people. The public should not expect courts to do so, and courts should not try. So for more on this and what we can expect today, let's bring in CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes joining us from Capitol Hill. Nancy, so at the top of the hour there, I, what I was trying to say is we got a good sense of probably where the questioning is going to go based on the opening statements from the, from the two uh, parties. And uh, everyone sort of s stayed in step, if you will, with what, what um, we were all kind of expecting. The Democrats in particular focused on health care yesterday, uh, sometimes crafting it around the coronavirus virus pandemic and how they felt the administration handled or mishandled it. Can you take us through what we can expect today from the Democrats, especially as they question Judge Barrett for the first time? Sure. Well, first of all, what you can expect today is part grilling, part endurance test, because there are 22 senators on this committee, 
and each of them get up to a half an hour to question Judge Amy Coney Barrett. So I'm no math whiz, but if everybody uses up all their time, I'm told that's about 11 hours. Now, um, it's possible that Republicans in particular may not each use up all that time. Democrats certainly will. And you're right that affordable, the Affordable Care Act is going to be a huge focus for Democrats today. They all had those big placards behind them yesterday talking about their own constituents, individuals who would either lose their coverage or perhaps um, lose um, money because they uh, you know, would no longer be covered for pre-existing pre conditions or perhaps um, those lifetime cap limits would be uh, reimposed if the uh, Affordable Care Act were to be struck, struck down. That's what Democrats are going to be focusing on today. They're going to ask Amy Coney Barrett about that article she wrote back in 2017 where she argued that uh, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, John Roberts, overstepped in order to save the Affordable Care Act. What exactly did she mean by that? What would she have done if she were on the court at that time? I think you'll also hear a lot more about Roe v. Wade and abortion than you heard yesterday. Remember, these Democrats have 30 minutes each, so uh, they've got a, a, a lot of ground that they can cover in that time. Uh, as for Republicans, you know, I think that it'll obviously be a, a much more, a much friendlier uh, uh, questioning style. They'll, they'll talk a lot about how impressive her credentials are. They'll ask her more about her judicial philosophy. Maybe they'll ask her about her relationship with her mentor, the late Justice Antonin Scalia, when she clerked for him, was one of his favorite clerks. Uh, so you'll hear a little bit more about her biography. Um, you know, Republicans were, were so praiseworthy yesterday, and I expect that that will continue today. Uh, as you know, Nancy, Republicans, on the other hand, have appealed to religious conservatives and other parts of their base by slamming Democrats for opposing Judge Barrett's religious beliefs back in 2017, and yet right. no Democrat has directly challenged her religion since her Supreme Court nomination was announced. And as I noted to you yesterday, there are currently five Supreme Court associate justices that are Catholic, uh, Kavanaugh, Sotomayor, Alito, Roberts, Thomas. Uh, so why the focal point on this? Is this a way to sort of rally the base, even though it doesn't appear the Democrats are going to take the bait? Right. I mean, partly it's a warning shot telling Democrats not to go down this route. Uh, you know, it's also an attempt to sort of uh, paint them as, as as bigoted in some way when, as you pointed out, Democrats made very clear to, to steer away from that topic yesterday. In fact, I don't know if Republicans did Judge Barrett any favors by bringing her faith up again and again, because you played some of the clips. It wasn't just that they said, hey, hands off her religion. They went further than that. Uh, ben Sass of Nebraska said even if you think her religion is wacky, you don't have a right to ask her about that. Or, or uh, Joni Ernst of Iowa said, you know, these people want to paint you as a handmaid um, uh, and some kind of, uh, you know, uh, religious, uh, you know, uh, you know, someone who's, who's kind of over the top. And, you know, they sort of painted this picture that I don't think a lot of Americans would have really had if they hadn't gone that route. Regardless, I, I really don't think you're going to hear anything from Democrats about that today. Uh, you know, a couple of them brought it up obliquely back in 2017. It did not go over well. And, and so, you know, I think that they're, they're not going to touch that third rail at all. Um, of course, like all things, pretty much all things uh, since March, the coronavirus has played a key role. Um, there were two senators on the Judicial Committee who have recently tested positive for the coronavirus. One of them participated in person, Senator Mike Lee of Utah, and right. we saw him speaking without a mask. Do we know, you know, what the situation is with um, both him and Tom Tillis? He, I presume he said that he was tested and that he, it's safe for him to, to be in that room. But, you know, what's the protocol that's been put in place? We saw that the judge kept her mask on unless she was speaking. Right. Uh, typically, the senators tend to take their masks off when they speak. Um, that's what Mike Lee did yesterday, and it wouldn't have drawn so much attention except for the fact that, as you pointed out, he did just have coronavirus. And while uh, he, he put out a press release yesterday saying that he had been cleared to return, what he did not say was that he had tested 
negative. Uh, and so that's why uh, there was uh, some surprise when he took his mask off. And now today, Senator Tillis, who participated remotely for the first day, says that he has now been cleared to return and in fact is going to participate in trials going forward um, to, uh, to help uh, develop antibody um, drug treatments for coronavirus. So they will both be in the room. Um, there is an expectation that, that senators and anybody else who's in the room will wear a mask when they're not speaking. But beyond that, there aren't uh, major requirements for testing, for example. It's kind of ad hoc. Senators, some senators are voluntarily getting tested. Others are pointedly refusing to get tested. Um, this is a step that the chair of the committee, Lindsey Graham, said he didn't feel was necessary because after all, the Senate has been operating for the past seven months, uh, holding many hearings that are partially in person, partially remote, where senators are not required to get tested. And so he argued that there was no reason to start now. Okay, Nancy, thank you so much. I appreciate you bringing us up to speed and helping us as we move forward to the hearing. Thank you. You got it. So just a reminder to everyone, uh, we'll be live at 9 a.m. Eastern with full coverage of today's Supreme Court confirmation hearing. Of course, that is here on CBSN, so stick around. All right, turning now to the coronavirus crisis, the U.S. has officially confirmed its first case 